Welcome back, everyone, to another deep dive. This time, um, we're going to be looking at smiles. Smiles. You know something that we all do, probably without even thinking about it too much? Yeah. But there's a lot going on. Yeah, a lot more than you think. Yeah, so uh, we're going to be going through this video we found, which is really, really interesting. Uh -huh. And, um, yeah, I mean, we're going to be looking at everything from the science behind them to cultural differences, even emojis. Yeah, and I, I think one of the most fascinating things that the video pointed out right from the start right. is that smiles aren't always about happiness. Yeah, that's right. It's not just about feeling joy. Right. It's it's really interesting because you can mm -hmm. you can smile when you're nervous, uh, when you're trying to hide how you really feel. Yeah. Um, even just to smooth over an awkward situation. Right. Or or even like you don't know someone. Yeah. And and you're just like giving them that polite smile. It's exact. Be like, okay, this is this is fine. Um and and so it's it's a really interesting way that we connect with people. Yes. Yes. It's one of the ways that we navigate through a lot of social situations. Yeah. And and it's it's very powerful. Like I was thinking about like that instant huh? smile that you give when you bump into an old friend. Oh yeah. You know, it's just like the this immediate warmth I'll and and you know that that sense of connection that it that it kind of sparks yeah and and you know it, it starts really early too even babies smile instinctively mm -hmm. it seems like it's kind of hardwired into us <sighs> as a way to communicate without words so so interesting so i mean it, it makes you kind of wonder then like what's the actual science behind something that seems so simple what's yeah. actually happening when we smile well on a on a basic level mm -hmm. like it's, it's a little workout for your facial muscles, right? Yeah. The corners of your mouth lift your lips part. Yeah. You, you might even get your cheeks involved. Mm -hmm. But the, the real complexity, I think, is in what triggers those muscles mm -hmm. and, and all the, the range of different messages yeah. that, that a smile can convey. Yeah, it's not just one thing. No. Now, the, the video goes on to talk about Dr. Nakia Gordon, okay. um, who is a psychology professor, and she suggests that Smiling can actually trick our brains ah. into feeling happier. Okay. Which sounds very counterintuitive. It does. Um, but but the idea is that, you know, even if you're not genuinely happy at that moment, mm -hmm. that the act of smiling sends these signals yeah. to your brain and actually induces feelings of happiness. Like a feedback loop almost. So, so you're saying, like, if I'm having a terrible day... Mm-hmm. And I just force myself to smile. Yeah, that might actually help. There's evidence to suggest that it might. Wow. So, yeah. so faking it till you make it actually applies to happiness. Potentially, yeah. But, but then that brings up this other interesting point. Like, how do we tell the difference between a real smile and a fake smile? Well, you've probably heard the phrase "smiling eyes" before. Right. And and it turns out there is some science behind that. Okay. Um, there was a French doctor way back in the 1800s, Guillaume Duchesne. Okay. And he discovered that real, genuine smiles engage the muscles around your eyes okay and create those telltale smile lines or crow's feet uh-huh and people are surprisingly good at at picking up on this distinction so those crinkles around the eyes yeah that's like a sign of a true smile it can be a sign of a true smile that's so fascinating and i mean it it makes you realize how much we rely on those subtle cues uh -huh. to kind of judge someone's sincerity. Yeah. And, and you know, a genuine smile really seems to be key mm -hmm. for building trust. Right. Because you're not going to trust someone who is giving you this kind of like strained, right. obviously fake smile. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't have the same impact. Not at all. And this makes me think about, um, I've always heard that women tend to smile yeah. more than men. More than men. Now, before we jump to any conclusions and yeah. say, oh, that means women are happier, uh -huh. the video does point out that's right. not necessarily true. Right. So are there other things that could be at play here? Well, I think societal expectations probably play a pretty big role. Okay. Um, you know, women are often encouraged to be more approachable and friendly. Mm -hmm. And smiling is a big part of that. Right. Whereas men might feel pressure to appear more serious or stoic. Okay. And maybe hold back their smiles more. So it's not just how you're feeling inside. Right. But also the social pressures and expectations that, exactly. like, that you're kind of dealing with. It's okay. a really important nuance to think about. Yeah, but it's not just societal expectations that can shape our understanding of smiles. Right. The video kind of takes us deeper here. Okay. By talking about how different cultures can interpret smiles in different ways. So a smile is not always a universal symbol of yeah, happiness. Not at all. Okay. This is blowing my mind. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more to it than meets the eye. So... 
So tell me more about some of the cultural differences. Well, you know, in the U.S., for instance, yeah. we tend to smile very frequently, right. especially in greetings and social interactions. Mm -hmm. But if you go to a place like Russia, okay, smiling a lot can actually be seen as a sign of shallowness. Really? Or even mistrust. Wow, that's, that's a big difference. Yeah. And it makes me realize, like, how important cultural awareness is, yeah. you know, especially in this world where we're all so interconnected. Yeah. Like a simple smile can be taken in completely different ways. Right. Depending on where you are and who you're with. Exactly. So so tell me more about this research that you mentioned. Well, one study that I thought was really interesting yeah. um, looked at Japanese and American perceptions of smiles. Okay. And what they found was that Japanese individuals tend to focus more on the eyes okay. to judge the sincerity of a smile, mm -hmm. while Americans, we tend to focus on the mouth. So so like a big toothy grin might be the epitome of friendliness in the U.S.? Yeah. But it wouldn't really carry the same weight in Japan? Not as much. They're looking for those genuine crinkles <laughs> yeah. around the eyes. We got it. The, the Duchenne markers yeah. that we were talking about. Uh -huh. That's so interesting, and it's a perfect example of how cultural values and norms can shape our understanding yep. of nonverbal communication. Definitely. Even something as simple as a smile can be packed with cultural meaning. And and this makes me wonder, like, how do these cultural differences yeah. play out in the digital world? Yeah. You know, with all the emojis that we use. Yeah, that's a great question, because I'm guessing there's some cultural nuances embedded even in those tiny uh, digital faces. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like if you look at the Japanese emoji, for example, mm -hmm. it often has a straight mouth and happy eyes. Which makes total sense if you think back to that study. Right. Like their culture really emphasizes the eyes as as like the window to the true emotions. Exactly. It's so interesting that even something as simple as an emoji right. can reflect these these subtle differences. And and if you compare that with like the the American emoji, yeah. It it's typically a wide curved mouth, huh? you know, em emphasizing that shape of the smile itself. Yeah. It's like those cultural values are kind of baked into the design. It really makes you think about how even in this digital age, like yeah. cultural differences are still so present uh -huh. and influential. Yeah. But I mean, regardless of how we express it mm. or how we interpret it, there's no denying the power of a smile. I think the video brings it back to Dr. Gordon's research here. Okay. To remind us that smiling can actually genuinely improve our mood. Right. It's like this little boost of positivity for ourselves and for the people around us. And and, and they even quote Mother Teresa in the video. Oh, really? They you... say, we will never know all the good a simple smile can do. That's a good one. It's so true. And it's just this powerful reminder of the impact that even like small acts of kindness can have. It really speaks to that. Yeah. Found impact something so small can have. Yeah. And it makes me wonder about laughter. Okay. Because, you know, those two things kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, they do. But what's the actual relationship between smiling and laughing? Well, I mean, not all smiles lead to laughter. Right. But laughter almost always involves a smile. Yeah. So I, I kind of think of laughter as like an amplified version okay. of the smile. So they're both expressing some sort of positive emotion. Yeah. But laughter is more spontaneous. Yes, more uninhibited. And and usually triggered by humor. Right, whereas a, a smile could be a little bit more... Controlled. Controlled, yeah, intentional. So it makes sense that they would both involve those feel-good chemicals in our brains. Exactly. You know, endorphins and all that. All those good things. So smiling and laughing are basically like natural forms of therapy. Yeah, I mean, they're like little doses of happiness. That's a great way to put it. That we can give ourselves. And and here's where it gets really interesting. Okay. You know how we were talking about how laughter is contagious? Mm. Well, smiles are contagious too. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that? I have, but I never really thought about why that is. It, it's this fascinating phenomenon called emotional contagion. Okay. Basically, we're subconsciously wired yeah. to mirror the emotions of other people. Especially people we like. Especially people that we perceive as, as friendly or trustworthy. Yeah. So when someone flashes you a genuine smile, uh -huh. your brain might just automatically activate those smile muscles. Oh, so it's like an unconscious reflex. It can be, yeah. That makes so much sense. And it explains why like seeing someone with a bright smile can totally lift your spirits, yeah. even if you're feeling down. Yeah, it's this reminder that even these small acts of positivity 
yeah. can have this ripple effect of yeah. you know, spreading joy and connection. It's so powerful. And you might not even realize you're doing it. It's like this this secret weapon. It is. This is all so fascinating. I, I, I feel like we've been taking smiles for granted. I know, me too. Our whole lives, and now we're like uncovering this whole hidden world right. of yeah. science and complexity. Yeah. I mean, something so simple turns out to be not so simple. Not so simple at all. Not at all. But if we're all wired to respond to smiles this way, mm -hmm. could we be using them more consciously? That's a really good question. To create more positive interactions. Yeah, because we were talking about before how right. even forced smiles can have some positive effects. So is there research to back that up? There is. There are studies that have shown that even if you're not genuinely feeling happy, mm -hmm. the act of smiling can still have a positive impact on your mood and your stress levels. So even if I'm having a bad day, mm -hmm. if I just make myself smile, yeah. it could actually help me feel better. Potentially. Yeah, it might sound counterintuitive. It does. But but the evidence suggests it can work. Wow. And it goes back to that feedback loop that wow. we were talking about. Right. The act of smiling sends those signals to your brain, mm. whether it's genuine or not. So maybe there is some truth to that old saying. Yeah. Just smile, it'll make you feel better. Maybe. I always thought that was such a cliche, but right. maybe there's some science behind it. There might be. And, and this has actually led some therapists oh, wow. to incorporate smiling exercises into their practice, like especially for people who are struggling with depression or anxiety. So instead of focusing on all the negative thoughts, uh -huh. they're encouraged to like literally smile their way yeah. to the better mood. Exactly. It's not a cure-all, obviously. Right. But it's it's a really simple, accessible tool Yeah. that can complement other forms of therapy. It's just incredible to me how something as natural as a smile can have such a big impact. Mm -hmm on our mental and emotional well-being. Yeah. And, and you know, we've covered a lot of ground here. Yeah, yeah. We've talked about the mechanics of a smile, the cultural variations, uh -huh. even its potential therapeutic benefits. Yeah, and yet there's still so much more to explore. I know. But before we delve any deeper, okay. I, I want to shift gears for a moment and talk yeah. about something else that's really closely tied to smiles. Okay. And that's laughter. Okay, I'm intrigued. We we touched on how laughter is contagious, mm -hmm. but what else can you tell us about its cultural significance? Well, you know, just as smiles can vary across cultures, right? So too can the the expression and the interpretation of laughter. Mm -hmm. In some cultures, laughter is very loud and boisterous, mm -hmm. while in others, it's more subdued and polite. And I imagine like the context in which laughter is considered appropriate. Oh, yeah. Could also vary. Absolutely. Like I could see how in some cultures it might be considered rude to laugh loudly in public uh -huh. or during formal occasions. Yeah. And and the type of humor that elicits laughter mm -hmm. can differ so much across cultures. Right. Like what one person finds hilarious. Right. Another person might not even understand. Exactly. Or even find offensive. Yeah. So it's just another reminder that even something as universal as laughter. Right is shaped by all these cultural norms and values. And being mindful of those differences can help us navigate social interactions yeah. with more sensitivity That's and it. avoid misunderstandings. Absolutely. This deep dive has been so enlightening. It has. I don't think I'll ever look at a smile or a laugh the same way again. I know, me neither. It's fascinating, isn't it? It really is. Something we take for granted turns out to be this rich tapestry of science and evolution and culture. Yeah. And to think we've only just scratched the surface. I know there's so much more to uncover. There is. But for now, let's just take a moment to appreciate Go. the power and the complexity of these, these simple mm. yet profound expressions. Yeah. And when we come back, we'll delve into the evolution of smiles. You will. And explore the intriguing world of smile therapy. Stay tuned. Welcome back to this deep dive into smiles and laughter. We were just about to get into the evolution of smiles. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting to think about how something that we associate with these really positive emotions right. could have evolved from something completely different. So you're saying that there was a time when a smile wasn't a friendly gesture? Yeah. Believe it or not, smiles have really deep roots in our evolutionary history. Huh. And and those early smiles weren't always about happiness. So so what did they mean back then? Well, early primates used facial expressions, including bared teeth, mm -hmm. primarily as a sign of aggression. Okay, or well, it, stopped, it was more like a warning signal. Yeah, like it. back off or I might bite. Right, right, okay. But then 
as social structures evolved yeah. mm -hmm. and primates started living in larger groups, mm -hmm. the, the function of those bared teeth yeah. started to shift. It makes sense. Like as primates became more cooperative, right. they would need ways to signal like non-aggression. Exactly. And build trust. But how did we go from like a threat display to a friendly gesture? Well, researchers believe it happened gradually. As, as primates started relying more on cooperation uh -huh. for survival. Okay. So a softened expression with, with the lips kind of turned up yeah. conveyed this sense of safety and friendliness. Like I'm not a threat. Yeah, I'm open to interaction. I'm cool. And then over time, this expression mm -hmm. became associated with positive emotions. Interesting. Like happiness and contentment. Wow. So so the smile basically evolved from a sign of aggression yeah. to a symbol of connection and joy. Pretty much. That's fascinating. And and it makes me wonder what other evolutionary secrets I know. could be hidden in our everyday expressions. Right. But but we've talked about the science. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the cultural significance of smiles. Yeah. We've even touched on this idea of smile therapy. Yeah. So what exactly does that involve? Well, as we talked about before, yeah. there's growing evidence that smiling, even when you don't genuinely feel happy, right. can actually have a positive impact on your mood and stress levels. Yeah. And and smile therapy takes this idea a step further. Okay. And encourages people to consciously use smiling uh -huh. as a tool to improve their well-being. So like a mental workout for positivity. Yeah, you're training your brain right. to associate smiling with feeling good. I like that. And and some therapists, they incorporate smile exercises okay. into their practice. You know, they might ask clients to hold a smile mm -hmm. for a certain amount of time or to practice smiling throughout the day. I mean, it's amazing to me that something as simple as a smile right. can have this profound effect on our minds and bodies. It's powerful. It really is. I'm definitely going to be more mindful of my own smiles. Me too. From now on. And maybe even try out some of those smile exercises. Yeah. This has been such an eye-opening deep dive. It has been. Thank you so much for, for taking us on this journey. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Yeah. You know, it's amazing how something we often take for granted can be so complex and fascinating. Mm -hmm. Hopefully this deep dive has inspired you to pay more attention to the smiles that you encounter, mm -hmm. both your own and, and those of others. Absolutely. And and just to appreciate the power that they hold. It's true. It's like this reminder that a smile can have this ripple effect. Yeah. You know, spreading joy and connection and even a little bit of happiness yeah. wherever it goes. So keep smiling, everyone. Keep smiling and keep exploring. Yes. There's always more to learn and discover. Absolutely. Until next time, happy smiling. And thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive.